All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR here. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you my impressions of one of my most highly anticipated games of the year, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Most of you know, I am a huge Final Fantasy VII fan. Um, it's easily in my top five favorite games of all time. Everybody knows, or most people know, the infamous 2015, 2016, uh, whatever year it was at E3, when they showed Final Fantasy, uh, when they revealed it, and I screamed at the top of my lungs and everybody could hear it, yada, yada, yada. So yeah, I know I'm a big fan. So shout out to Square Enix. They did provide me with a review code uh, for me to play the game early. And I live streamed um, all the parts that I played so far. And I played for about eight hours. So my impressions is based on playing for uh, about that amount of time. So people have been waiting for this game a long time. As we know, it is split up um, into episodes. It's not the full game. And I'm not gonna, gonna get into the debate whether it's worth it, whether they should have done it. I've had that conversation with a, you know, many times and that debate with a lot of people. It is what it is, right? There, there was no way that I was gonna wait for the full game to come out or not support it because I didn't want because I wanted the full game. I'm going to play and enjoy it for what it is and what is available, right? So, does it live up to the hype? So, so far, I'm really enjoying the game. I really like the game. There's a few things that I'm not going to talk about in this impressions because um, I spoke about it in my impressions when um, I played the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo that they released before this, and a lot of things from that still apply. So if you want to know my impressions based on what I said about the demo, which are still valid, you can go check out that video. So let's touch on the story a little bit. So obviously, as we know, it's still in essence and at the core, the same Final Fantasy VII story. But very early on, you see a lot of new aspects to the game that were not in the original at all. They have changed up a lot of things, altered the timeline um, of a few things and made the the early parts of the game a lot more dense. Um, just in the t short time I played, uh, there are new characters uh, or at least a new character and he's a he's a major character that's going to be reoccurring throughout the game he wasn't just like a one and done character um he's going to be a prominent character throughout the game and they made that very clear clear right and he fits he fits into the story and the game very well. It, it doesn't. It didn't seem weird. It didn't seem forced or shoehorned um, for the for the sake of filler. The character fits very well into the game. So I, I really like the new character that they introduced um, kind of early. Um, there's new scenes uh, and new missions that flesh out a lot of the supporting cast, uh, such as the characters in Avalanche. And if you know what happens in the game. Um, regarding these characters, it their choices to change some of the story and add some of these side missions adds a lot of weight for what will come later on, right? So uh, that's as far as I'm going to get into the story. But they've made some good cho changes and some and, and one change that I got to it that I wasn't really sure what was the point of them adding this. Uh, to the story so early, but obviously for spoilers sake, I'm not going to get into that. I want to touch on the visuals. So the game seems to be a locked 30 frames. Well, I'm not going to say a locked because during battle sequences, I absolutely felt and and saw um, some frame drops. And during the demo, this was the first thing I noticed when I played the game when I very first booted up is the frame rate because in the demo. The frame rate was very clearly unlocked. It seems to be hovering maybe between 40 and 50. And someone told me that Digital Foundry, you know, got their hands on the game and they had said it was going to be a lock 30 because apparently they had a re review uh, code of the game and everything like that. But I didn't watch that video. So it was a total shock to me when I played this game and it was cl very clearly 30 frames, which is unfortunate. I would rather it be unlocked um and performing between 40 and 50 frames rather than it be like 30 frames but 
they obviously decided to do this for you know optimization stabilization um to you know to stabilize it with the visuals of the game and everything like that it's unfortunate it has to be 30 frames especially um since this is an action uh type rpg now because of the changed battle system if this was just the um you know how the original game was if it wasn't an active battle system um and it, it was just turn based then the frame rate wouldn't be a problem at all but there are times where i did feel like the frame rate um like little stutters here and there little frame drops did absolutely affect the gameplay um also the visuals are very inconsistent throughout the game now there are certain parts of the game where it's like yo this looks amazing and you can clearly see that they focused on scenes where they did close-ups of the characters the character models look really good even the environment in certain some parts of the game look really good and then you get to other parts of the game and it's like the environment got absolutely no love no care no consideration this was not the priority at this point uh and and some people have said this and said that it might be fixed in a day one patch because obviously i'm playing the game before the day one patch but usually in my experience day one patches don't add textures usually it, it's possible but usually how you see the environment that's probably how it's gonna stay right so i highly doubt that a day one patch is gonna uh fix the problem of missing textures or low res textures in the environment and it's stuff that's the average person may not notice in for example a door like a door or a doorknob there may be absolutely no texture or just a missing texture and you could even see like the square the squ the pixels you know on the actual uh on the uh, the actual thing in the environment that's how bad it looks and then there's like i said there's other parts of the game where it's just very crispy it seems like it's running at a uh it, it seems like it, it's at a very high resolution and there's parts where it's just really bad so the visuals are up and down depending on what what part of the game you're at as far as the, as long as far as the environment goes the character models um and whatever is the focus at the time is usually usually looks very very good um at certain parts of the game there's also like this tint or this filter i hate when games kind of put like tints or filters um I, you know i think that kind of takes away from the presentation it's one thing when it you know it, it's used for time of the day but for some parts of the game it just seems unnecessary the npc animations also some are very lacking um you'll go up to one npc and the uh you know their facial animations are good their uh you know their character models are good their the way their mouth is synced up with their dialogue is very good and then you'll go to another npc and it looks like complete trash something out of like mass effect andromeda or something like that mass effect andromeda was that was that the game that was super buggy and and trash it was mass effect andromeda right and then on top of that in there's also beautifully animated um in-game scenes that are on the quality level of like final fantasy uh 7 advent children if anybody has seen um you know final fantasy 7 advent advent children which is the animated uh cgi movie it's it's an absolutely gorgeous uh beautiful looking uh movie and there's scenes in this game that match the the quality and the presentation of that but so we can go from that to missing textures you know it, it's like i said it's kind of all over the place um getting a little bit into uh gameplay by the way the soundtrack they've like kind of remastered the score and and the soundtrack uh there's just the you know the effect the sound effects and the sound engineering is great there's a good level of nostalgia there it still hits the same and i'm not somebody who's you know um who cares about music and the score video games that much i'm not that impressed by the average sounding you know music and video games but final fantasy 7 to me had one of the best and i wasn't sure if this the music um returning in the remake would hit the same and i definitely feel like it's it's close it, it's very close i won't say it's, it hits exactly the same as as the original version but it, it's it's very close um, just to touch on a few aspects of the gameplay 
um, that are different. Like I said, I discussed a lot of the gameplay and my first impressions of the demo. So one thing I learned is that summons can only be used in boss fights. Yes, you cannot use summons in, you know, every random enemy like you could in the original game. Like in the original game, if you wanted to, you could summon Knights of the Round Table or Leviathan on just some random weak enemy, just for shits and giggles, just for just for the hell of it, just just to see it, right? Now, this it's, it's only in designated parts of the game, um, like boss fights, mini boss fights, certain designated areas where you can use summons unfortunately and i was like oh, i was a little bit bummed out about that about that uh it, i guess it kind of makes sense why they chose to do that but it, it still kind of bumps me out that you can only uh use uh it at designated areas with boss fights uh hopefully that means there is a lot more boss fights in the game and so far i haven't i have encountered that there are more side missions. The first few hours of the game serves very much as like a tutorial for the game. Um, so that's what most of the side missions are gonna be. Uh, like I said, they also use those side missions to flesh out a lot of the characters, as I mentioned earlier. Um, most of it is not filler. A lot of people were worried about the, about the added content. Um, to make this to make this first part of the game longer they were worried about it being filler i can say it's not most of it is not really filler it it's actually um it, it it's it's necessary and it's it's relevant right it's full of substance and it adds to it actually adds to the game the voice acting is good most of the time i would change um in these type of games i would change the the uh the voices to japanese but the english voices are okay they're not the best especially with certain characters but they're okay so i keep it on english you also get a lot more different materia um earlier in this game than you do in the original like they just like throw a lot of materia at you or the chances to get a lot of materia uh very early in this game um just to give you all i guess a timeline comparison because as i said they added a lot of content um I would say like what maybe two three hours into the game you're doing your like you're getting up to the second bombing run where avalanche goes on the second bombing run and yeah I think about seven hours into the game I'm about to do that so like four hours or approximately about that ha amount of content has been added between like the first bombing run and and like the the second one if you if you get what i'm saying so they've really like added content to space out those those events something new in the game is you can upgrade weapons in the original the only way to get um to improve your weapons is to just buy a stronger weapon now you can actually uh upgrade your weapons you do that by pretty much leveling up and when you level up you'll gain sp sp is is just for upgrading your weapons and buffing them um you'll, you'll probably see it on screen and you can choose to do things like add damage add defense uh to your weapons um add a materia slot i believe and what's good about it is uh, you don't have to worry about like, okay, I don't I don't want to use too much SP on this weapon and then not have not have enough for uh, another weapon because each weapon gets its own specific uh, gets its own um, amount of SP. So like each weapon will get 24 SP instead of like you having to use 24 SP for, you know, across all the weapons. Right. And because you may want to switch back and forth between weapons, um, because even though one weapon may be stronger, another weapon may be weaker, but it has more materia slots. So they give you the opportunity to, um, uh, you know, customize how you wanna play and what's more important to you. Uh, and weapons, uh, as soon as you upgrade or get a new weapon, the, the last weapon isn't just like, uh, pointless and and garbage now right it, it still has it, it still has use so you might want to keep it right so unlike the original as soon as you get a new weapon you pretty much never went back it's a little bit different in this one um this game is, is a game that clearly could have benefited from some ss uh some ssds as we know the ps5 is gonna have some the loading um in some parts of the game uh is a little bit slow uh, for example, when you look at the uh, the game's uh, enemy intel or enemy encyclopedia, it takes a while just to load the uh, 
load the image of the enemies because in this game you can and in the original game too you could pretty i can't i can't remember if, if it was the same a uh, name of the ability where you could assess the enemy and get all of their information but in this game you can you can when you run into enemies you can assess them which is pretty much analyzing them it's a materia and the benefit of that is when you assess them you get their information you get their weakness and all and all that information on them and there's a new character in this game called chadley in which if you analyze a lot of these enemies uh he'll like create new materia based based on that uh you can also set which character you want to be uh the leader so when you engage in battle that'll be the character uh it starts it starts you out as you'll and there were there will be some times where you might have to like struggle with the camera the camera is not perfect in, perfect in this game so there are some camera issues um and yeah i think uh that kind of summarizes my first uh like eight hours with this game so far but i'm really liking the game um it's fun it's addictive i don't want to stop playing and yeah even though square enix did sponsor me by giving me a code i i already had this game pre-ordered because i i wasn't sure if i would get a code so i was gladly willing and able to pay 60 dollars for this game with absolutely no problem right so to me it's worth a full sixty dollars i was like i said i already had it pre-ordered digitally so um and based on what i played so far it's it would have been worth the sixty dollars that i would have paid so those are my impressions um let me know what all of you think if you've well most of you probably haven't played the game it comes out tomorrow but let me know what y'all think about my impressions make sure you hit the like button uh check out my future live streams um hit the notification bell so you can know anytime i upload a video or when i live stream and uh yeah consider becoming a, a member and hitting that join button and follow me on twitter all right i will check y'all later i'm out of here peace